Good day, folks. Welcome to my beginner's guide for the DJI Mavic Air 2. Every year when DJI releases a new drone, I like to create a beginner's guide to help those who are maybe purchasing this as their very first drone to help them learn more about the equipment, what's all inside the box, how to use it, and how to get ready to take their first flight. In this video, we're going to take the drone out of the box. We're going to go over all the hardware and how to use it. I'm going to show you how to connect everything together, how to use the app, and some of the features built into it. If you've chosen the Mavic Air 2 for your very first drone, you're going to be quite impressed with its capabilities. So let's just jump right in and take a look. So we've got the box here for the Mavic Air 2. Now this is just the base kit. When you purchase the Mavic Air 2, you can buy the base kit, which just includes a drone, one battery, and the controller. Or you can buy the Fly More combo that includes the drone, some extra batteries, the controller, a case, some ND filters, and a few other extra goodies to help get the most out of your drone. Now whether you've purchased the Fly More combo or just the base combo, either way you can follow along with this video. So let's go ahead and we'll just get the drone out of the box here and we'll take a look at all the hardware and things that come with it. So when we take the lid off the box here, you can see we're greeted by the drone. So we're just going to go ahead and pull that out. We'll just set it to the side here. There's a little tab there at the top. We'll just pull that out. Now just keep in mind, I've already had my drone out of the box. Yours is going to have some stickers on it that we will need to remove. On the right hand side of the box here, you can see we have the controller. Again, we'll just take it out and we'll set it to the side. You'll also see that we have some information about the drone. It's a good idea to read through this when you have some time. It has some important information in it. Now down there at the bottom you can see there's another box. There's a little tab there that you just pull up and you can take the box out. And this is where all our accessories are, the charger, some extra propellers, and a few other things. So let's go ahead and we'll empty the box out. And again, yours is going to be packaged a little bit differently because I've had mine out of the box so all the cellophane wrappers already been taken off. So the first thing we got here is a charging brick. You will also have a power cord for the charging brick. You can see here on the side of the box, we have six propellers. There's four that are going to be for the drone that we're going to install. And then we have two spares. And the last thing in the box here, in this little package here, we have some spare sticks for the controller. These are just in case you happen to lose them because they are removable. And sometimes they are easily lost if you're out in the field flying and you undo them. and you drop them down in some grass, sometimes they're hard to find. So they do give you an extra set of those. We have a USB-C cable. It has USB-A on one end and USB-C on the other end. This is used to connect the drone to your computer, but it's also used to charge up the remote. And then lastly, we have some data cables. These are the cables that go from the remote to a phone. And they give you some spares here because that way, depending on what phone you have, you have the appropriate end. There's already a lightning inversion installed in the controller. So if you're going to be connecting to an iPhone, you're already set up. If you're going to be connecting it to something like an Android device, we will need to install the appropriate cable. And we'll take a look at that here coming up in a minute. And lastly, of course, we have the charging brick and the power cable. And depending what country you live in, you'll have the appropriate end. You'll also notice that there's a USB-A port on the charging brick. So when you have this plugged into a wall you can actually take the USB-C cable and charge up your remote at the same time. So let's put all this stuff away here and we will take a closer look at the drone and the controller. So here's the drone here. It's a nice compact drone and that's uh, one thing that's going to be appealing to many people. It's easy to travel with, it's easy to pack. You can see here it's in its folded state and that's kind of what made the Mavic such a popular drone is that it folds up into a nice compact package. Now your drone is going to be covered with stickers so it's a good time now to take them off. You may have to unfold the drone in order to get at all of them. So let's go ahead here and we're going to unfold the drone you always unfold these front arms first and the reason being if you did the back ones first you can see here you can no longer unfold the front ones so unfold the front ones first just like that these back ones kind of flip down and out just like that before we get too far into things, I'll kind of do a walk around of the drone, show you where everything is on it and what they're for. So you can see here at the top, this is our battery. Let's go ahead and uh, remove the battery. We're going to press those two buttons in at the side and just pull it right up. If we go over to the side of the drone here, we can pull that flap open. You can see there that we have a USB-C port. That port is one of those things that you may use or you may not use. They're very handy if you're going to be updating your drone via computer. On the other side, if we flip it over, we have another cover. And you can see here when we open it up, it has a memory card slot. Now this drone has eight gigabytes of storage built into it, but I do recommend picking up another memory card as eight gigabytes will fill up fairly quickly. You can see here, I have a 128 gigabyte SanDisk card and I'm just gonna slide it into the side there. When you put it in, you just want the graphic facing down and it just clicks in there like that. So now when we're recording video, we have the option to record to the memory card or to the internal storage. 
And later on in the video when we have the app installed and running, I'll show you how to switch back and forth between the two. Now as we look around the drone, you can see here at the back we have two obstacle avoidance sensors. If we go to the front of the drone, we have two more there. You can see here we have two more and we have an infrared sensor. We also have an LED light. That LED light can come in handy sometimes when you're landing to help illuminate the ground. At the front here you can see we have a gimbal guard and that kind of protects the gimbal when the drone is being transported. To remove it, we're just gonna kind of press down and out, just like that, and we remove it just like so. Once we take that off, it reveals our camera. This is actually a really good camera. It does 4K60, which is pretty impressive for a small drone like this. It captures very impressive 48 megapixel photos. So once you get going, you're going to be able to capture some really impressive content with this little drone. So that's basically everything we need to know about the different ports and sensors on the drone. Now there's two more steps we need to do before the drone is ready to fly. We need to charge up our battery and we need to install the propellers. Let's go ahead and do the propellers first. When you take these propellers out of their packaging, you're going to notice that there's two types. It's a very subtle difference, but basically if you look at the top of the propeller, you can see one here has a silver lining around that opening. This one here is just black. So you're going to have a total of three with a silver ring, and you're going to have a total of three that are just black. And they go on a very specific way to the drone, and I'll just show you here. So what we're going to do is take two with the silver ring and two with the black ring, and we're just going to line them up. If you look at the motors here, you can see this motor has these silver dashes on it whereas this one only has black. And again, over on this side, you're gonna see that it has those silver dashes as well. So basically, you just line them up like that. Silver to silver, just like that, and black to black. And they always go diagonal. This propeller and that propeller are the same, and this propeller and that propeller are the same. There's different ways you can put them on. Some people like to have the propeller opened up when they put them on. Some people like to have them closed. Personally, I find it easier when they're closed to put them on. You're just going to line up the groove and then twist. It's always a good idea then to double check to make sure they're locked in. Just like that. We got that one on. So there we go. We got them all installed. You can just take your extra spares and put them in your drone bag. And that way if you happen to damage one, then you can easily replace it. So let's take a look at the batteries here. Before we can go any further, we need to charge it up. Now these batteries, when DJI ships them, are in a special hibernation mode. So they need to be activated before we can use them. And you'll know that they're in hibernation mode. When you press the button, there should be no lights that light up on it. To activate them, it's very easy. We're just basically going to give them a full charge and they'll be ready to use. So I've got my charger plugged in and we're going to get ready to charge the batteries. Now, if you purchase the Fly More Combo, you're going to have a few extra batteries and you're also going to have what's called a charging hub. I don't have one here to show you, but basically it's a flat device and you can plug the different batteries right into the charger and charge multiple batteries in succession. Now it is recommended that when these batteries are brand new and you have to fully charge them for the first time and activate them, just to use the charging brick alone. It's a good idea to avoid using the charging hub until each battery has been charged once with the charging brick. After that, you can then enjoy the convenience of having a charging hub. So basically, we're just gonna line up the battery charger, plug it in, and uh, right away, you're gonna see your lights come on and it's gonna start charging. Just like that there. Now these batteries do take a while to charge. It could take up to an hour and 20 minutes, sometimes even a little bit longer, depending on how much charge is left in them. You'll know that the battery is done charging when all the lights are out. At any time when you have a battery out or even in the drone, you can press on it just once and it'll show you how much charge is left in it. You can see there I have two illuminated dots, so that means there's about 50% battery in it. And don't forget while you have your battery charger out, it's also a good idea to now charge up the remote. Like I've already shown you, there's a USB-A port on the side of the charging brick. Just take the included USB-C cable that came with the package, plug it into the charging brick, and then into the bottom of the controller on that USB-C port. There's LED lights at the bottom that will signify that it's charging and they'll go out when it's fully charged. So at this point, when your battery is charged, it's now time to put it back into the aircraft. All you basically do is just line it up and press it down in until it clicks. So let's go ahead and we'll set the drone aside for a minute. And now we're gonna take a look at the controller. This is a brand new design this year from DJI and I actually, I really like it. It's very comfortable to hold and it's much easier to mount a smartphone in it than in previous models. So let's take a look around the controller here first and then I'll show you how to mount your phone in it. The first thing we should do is install the control sticks. Uh, the reason why they make them with removable control sticks now is that it makes it much easier to pack. You can now throw this right into a camera bag. It takes up a smaller profile just because it doesn't have those sticks sitting out and you don't have to worry about maybe damaging or breaking them off. The sticks are stored at the bottom here in these rubber grips. They're both identical, so it doesn't matter which side you put them on. They just twist right in. And like I mentioned, these things can actually be fairly easily lost. 
I guess just like that there if you're out in some grass you could drop it and not be able to find it that's why it's a good idea to make sure you always carry your extra sticks with you so let's take a look at some of the buttons and the functionality of the controller on the front here we have our power button and we can just press it once to show us how much battery power is remaining in the controller. On the other side, we have a return to home button. When we're out flying and we want the drone to come home to where we took off from, we just press and hold the return to home button. It's really handy too, because especially flying in the beginning, sometimes you lose your orientation, You know, especially if you're a fair distance away. In those situations, it's really nice. You can just hit the return to home button and it'll come right back to you. In the middle here, we have a toggle switch and we can switch to different modes. You can see here we have tripod mode, normal mode and sport mode. And basically the difference is normal is just what it sounds like. That's kind of the normal flying mode. If you want to go slower, if you're trying to get some really nice slow cinematic shots, you would switch it over to tripod mode. If you want to go a lot faster and get some nice soaring shots, you would switch it over to sport mode. But for the most part, while you're learning, you're probably best just to leave it in normal mode. On the right hand side here, we have a button and that quickly switches us between photo and video mode. So if you've been in video mode and you've been recording videos, but now you want to take some photos, you can just press that button and that will now switch you over to photo mode. On the left hand side here, we have a function button. By default, this button is already pre-programmed, but you can set it to do various tasks within the app. A single press of it will turn on the LED light on the bottom of the drone. Another single press will turn it off. A double press will recenter the gimbal. Say you have your camera pointed down and you want to bring it back up to the horizon. You just do a double press. You can see on this side here, we have a record and shutter button. So depending what mode you're in, if you're in video mode and you press that button, it's going to start recording video. You press it again, it will stop. If you're in photo mode, you press the shutter button, it'll take a photo. On the other side here, we have a gimbal wheel. So that's going to move your gimbal up and down. And then here at the top, this is our smartphone holder. To open it up, you can see here there's a little bit of a lip. So you can just pull on it and pull it out like that. Now, I don't know if you can see it there on video, but there's a lightning cable already pre-installed and it's wrapped up nicely in there. We're going to pull that side out there. That's the lightning end and it just unravels. The other side is USB-C and it's connected directly into the controller. Now, if you need to switch that cable, say you have an Android device, you're just going to pull out that end there. You can see it reveals the USB-C port underneath. I don't know if you can see that or not. We're then going to take the appropriate cable. So for Android, you would take a USB-C to USB-C plug it in there like that and now you're ready to connect to an Android device because we're going to be connecting to an iPhone in this video I got to put the lightning connector back in now another really nice feature of this controller is that you can actually mount a phone in there that has a case on it so to put the phone in we're just going to take it and uh, we're going to slide it and push just like that and you can see it's now installed and then we're going to take the lightning cable and plug it into the lightning port Okay, so we have the hardware all ready to go. We've got the controller charged up, we've got our phone mounted, and we've got the battery charged up on the drone. We've got all the stickers removed, and we have our propellers installed. There's a couple things that we need to do before we can fly. The main thing is we have to download the DJI Fly app. The DJI Fly app was released last year when they launched the Mavic Mini, and you use the exact same app for flying both the Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air 2. The app will automatically detect what drone you're connected to. So you can see here I already have the DJI Fly app installed. You can install the Fly app at any time you don't actually have to have the phone mounted in the controller to download it so at this point let's go ahead and power on our aircraft and we're going to power on the controller it doesn't really matter which order you power them on you can power the drone on first and then the controller or you can power the controller on first and then the drone so to power on the controller we have to do two presses on the power button we have to do one quick press and then a long press so we're going to do a quick press and then a long press you can hear that beep that's signifying that it's powered on and you can see these lights here will illuminate these lights here on the controller will continue to blink until it's connected to the aircraft. Once it's made a connection with the aircraft, those will stay solid. So now at this point, we are going to power on the aircraft, but always make sure you have your gimbal guard off. You don't want to power on the aircraft when your gimbal guard is on. You could end up doing some damage to it. So to power on the aircraft, it's the exact same thing. Again, first I'll show you, you can press on it just once there, and that'll show you how much battery power is in that battery. To power it on, it's just like the controller. We're going to do a quick single press and then a long press. You'll hear the aircraft power on and just let it go through its calibration. Now, before we continue here, I just want to mention to power off the controller, it's the exact same procedure. You're going to do a single press and then a long press and that will power it off. And you do the exact same for the drone, a single press and then a long press and that will power it off. Let me go ahead here and repower on the controller. So you can notice here that these lights are blinking 
and uh, that means it's not connected to anything yet. Once it connected to the controller, you can see here how the lights have turned green and are blinking green. So now at this point, we're ready to launch our DJI Fly app. So let's go ahead and we will launch it there. You can see right away it detected the Mavic Air 2. Now mine is all ready to go. We could just theoretically hit that Go Fly button and it would launch the uh, app interface. Because your drone is brand new, there is a few things that need to be done. The two main things that have to be done is you have to activate the aircraft and you have to update the firmware. The message will pop up to guide you through that. So make sure at this point your phone is connected to Wi-Fi. It's going to ask you if you don't already have a DJI account to create one and it will walk you through the process of activating the drone. When that's done, a message should pop up on the screen asking you to update firmware. Like we talked about earlier in this video, the aircraft has firmware in it and that gets updated periodically to add new features and to fix problems. All you're going to do is hit the update now button and it will go ahead and start installing the update to the aircraft. Sometimes there's updates to the controller software as well and it'll explain that to you as it's going along. And don't be alarmed, your aircraft may restart a few times throughout the procedure. Once everything is done and updated and your aircraft is ready to go, you're going to come to this screen here that I have on mine. There's a few things here on the screen and we'll just take a quick look at them. You can see we have a button called Album. And basically everything you film is going to be stored in there so you can go in and preview it. And uh, the thing you have to remember is that what you're previewing after you've recorded stuff is not the high-res version. The high-res versions are still stored on the aircraft memory card. I've already uploaded a video on how to download the high-res versions so you can go back through my channel and watch that video. When you're ready we're going to hit the go fly and that's going to launch the app interface. Now I'm not going to go over all the details of the Fly app because there is a lot to learn. I'm going to do a full walkthrough of it in another video coming up shortly. I'm just going to show you some of the basic controls and things that you should know about. Up at the top left hand side here, it's going to give you some information. It's going to tell you when the aircraft is ready to take off. If it detects any problems, say the built-in compass on the drone needs to be calibrated or the IMU that's built into the drone needs to be calibrated, It'll give you a message there saying that needs calibration. The drone has built-in GPS functions. It connects to satellites when you're outside. And those satellite connections are very important. It helps know where the drone is at all times. It helps your return to home. And it helps keep the drone stable in the air. Keep it from drifting around in the wind. You'll know how many satellites you're connected to by the icon. You can probably barely see it there. It's red right now because it's not connected to any. Best to wait till there's at least a connection of eight satellites before you take off. Beside that, you can see it gives us some battery information. Once we're in flight up in the air, it gives us more detail. You can click on that at any time and it gives you a little bit more information about your battery. At the bottom right hand side, here's how you switch back and forth between manual camera settings and automatic camera settings. As a beginner, I would probably just leave it in auto until you're comfortable with the drone and then you can start playing around and getting creative with your camera settings. Over to the right hand side here is how we switch back and forth between camera and photo mode. It's also how we set some of the different flight modes. This bottom play button again takes us into our gallery stuff that we've already recorded. Above that is our record button. It's also our shutter button if we were in photo mode. And right above that, that signifies what mode we're in. You can see the icons, a picture of a film strip. That means we're in video mode. So if I hit the record button on the screen or that shutter button that I showed you earlier on the back of the controller, it would start recording video. Just like that there. To stop recording, again, we touch it. That'll stop it. Or like I mentioned, you can use the shutter button on the back of the controller. Now if we click on that icon there, that's how we can switch to the different modes. You can see here we can select photo. That'll switch us over to photo mode. We can go back to video. We can film hyperlapse or we can do some quick shots. Quick shots are nice tools to allow you to get some really interesting shots. But I'm not going to go over that in this video. We'll cover that in maybe some upcoming videos. As you can see, the menu goes a little bit deeper for every mode. For example, when we're in video mode, we can shoot in normal, HDR, slow motion. We can set our resolution, we can shoot in 4K, and we can also set our frames per second. Depending on what you're filming in that, but for the most part, you're going to want to be filming in 4K at 30 frames per second. That's my preference when filming, but uh, of course, you know, everybody's going to have their own preferences on what they like. If we click those three dots there at the top, that's going to bring us into our settings. It's a good idea to browse through it and familiarize yourself with some of the settings. Some of the ones that you want to pay attention to is uh, make sure your obstacle avoidance is turned on and uh, a pass is a good thing to make sure is on as well what a pass is is if it comes to a obstacle the drone will go around it automatically and of course obstacle detection is just like what it sounds like it'll uh, let you know and stop the drone if it gets too close to something. You just have to remember with obstacle avoidance is that with this drone it's not 360 degree obstacle avoidance. You don't have any sensors on the top or the sides of the drone. It is still possible to hit something so you still have to take precautions. 
You can also set your limits there and uh, sometimes it's not a bad idea to do when you're a new pilot. You can set the maximum height that you're allowed to fly, how far you can fly. Right now I've got mine at no limit, but say you don't want to fly any farther than 170 meters from where you take off from, you could set that while you're learning. Now the auto return to home altitude can be very important. If the drone happens to be disconnected while you're in flight or you hit the return to home button on the screen, the drone was going to go to that predetermined height first before it comes home. It's going to go straight up to that height. And what you want to make sure is you have that set taller than the tallest obstacle. For example, if you have trees that are 30 meters tall, you might want to set your return to home height at 40 meters. And that way, if it is coming home, you know you're not going to run into any trouble by it hitting an obstacle. The other option that's important to know about is how to update your home point. When the aircraft takes off, it's going to set that location as its home point, and that's where it's going to come home to. But uh, sometimes, you know, you might be in a park and you're walking around. You might want it to come home to a different point. So at any time, you can go in and update the home point to where you're located. Like I said, there's all kinds of settings in here that you can go over. Another important one is if you go to camera, you can see here, this is where we can change some settings for the camera. When you're learning, this is probably not something you're going to mess around with too much. But as you go along and you're learning, you might want to come in and take a look at some of the different options. But under camera, there is one important thing that you might want to learn about before you fly. And if we scroll down, you can see we come to this section here. You can see it says storage location. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the drone has eight gigabytes of storage built into it. You can see it's listed there. That eight gigabytes of storage is listed on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side here, it's reading the memory card that I have in it. So if you want to switch back and forth between the internal memory and the external memory, you can do so quite easily. And that's a good thing to know about because if you're out flying and you've been doing a lot of recording, you might fill up that memory card that you installed. At any time, you can then switch over to the internal storage and continue to record. And like I said, there's a lot more settings to learn about as time goes on. But in the beginning, you don't want to overwhelm yourself too much by trying to learn too much at once. Now, a couple last quick things here before I go, uh, what to do with the app anyways. Uh, I'm going to show you how to take off and land. There's two different ways in which you can take off. First off, you can see this button here at the top on the left-hand side. If we press it, you can see that box comes up on the screen there so that's how we take off automatically all we do is press and hold that you can see that green comes on i don't want to actually take off here because i'm in a in the house here i got cameras above me but uh, all you would do is press and hold that until it completes the circle and then the drone will take off it's going to go to about a meter and then hover until you give it control on the sticks the other way to do it is by using the control sticks but that's something you can learn at a later time in the beginning it's best just to use that launch button if you want to land the drone after you've launched it, say it's still at that meter height, that button will change to a land button. You would just press it and the drone would then go back to where it landed from. Or if it's hovering, you can just press the left control stick and hold it down. It will also then go ahead and land. Like I mentioned, if you're out flying and you're not quite sure where you are, you can press the return to home anytime on the controller or on the screen there at the left hand side. The drone would then go to that predetermined height that I showed you. It would come straight across to where you're located and then it would go ahead into its landing procedure. The other thing you will have to familiarize yourself with is the control sticks and what each stick movement does. The stick movements are actually fairly easy to learn and you'll pick them up pretty quickly. On the right hand stick here, if you push it forward, the drone will move forward. If you pull it back, it will move back. If you push it side to side, the drone will move side to side depending on which way you push it. On the left hand stick here to move the drone up to raise its altitude you press up. To lower its altitude you pull down. When you go side to side on the left hand stick that actually spins the drone around. So getting comfortable on the sticks will just come with time but they are pretty easy to pick up. So that's basically it for the app and the controller just some basic things to get you started. Now a few tips here for new pilots. If this is going to be your very first time flying a drone make sure when you go to fly it for the first time find a nice big open field. Even though there is some obstacle avoidance on the drone it's still best to find an open field with no trees or poles or any other people around. You know, just start slow, move the drone forward, move it backwards, raise it up, lower it, practice landing it, practice taking off. You'll find that you'll get very comfortable very quickly and you'll want to venture out a little farther, a little higher, and definitely that's a great way to learn. That's basically it for my beginner's guide. I've already made quite a few videos on the Mavic Air 2, so you can go back and check through them. And I have a ton of other videos coming up that you might be interested to watch as well. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.